Alright, so hopefully this works. If not, then I'll be very sad by the end of this video. Uh, this is going to be the last video that I put up in this particular series. Basically, I just want to do a quick run through of this game on normal, where I'm going to wander around with all of my overpowered equipment. I'm going to skip all the cutscenes, skip all the codex, and just play this like an actual normal human being. between light and heavy strikes to match the situation. Dryden, the limo is in trouble. Get back there, ASAP. Why ahead of you, Boris? I'll add the limo to your solid down radar. The purpose of this playthrough is specifically looking for the trophy tearing away the disguise, which is basically killing the five humanoid dwarf gecko, the two stacked on top of each other. I've tried a couple of times to get that over the last two days, and it is not dropping for me. The trophy guide suggests that this all needs to be done in one particular run, and that is what I'm trying to do with this playthrough here. Hopefully it works. Right, we're not getting no damage here. Uh, you're out there, MG Ray. Okay, so it looks like it is actually possible to get through this battle without him using the plasma cutter. Plasma cannon, whatever. Well, so you can totally leave this here and just let it run. I mean, this is proof that it's got better QTEs than Bayonetta. Oh, I'll be mentioning that name a few times in this playthrough. Also, well, I'll be nice. I might hack off the arm. It's totally different given that I didn't hack off the arm. If you hack off the arm, it falls down into pieces. He's on the other side of that collapsed building. Go. So I've been playing this a lot. It's been roughly 48 hours since I actually finished my playthrough of this game. Or recording rather. And I've been playing yeah. it a lot yeah. since. At this point I have pretty much all except 10 trophies. Six of them are connected to Revengeance mode, which is basically S-ranking Revengeance and also no damage against five bosses so Don't that makes up six of the trophies two of the other trophies are for grinding custom cyborgs and heavy cyborgs so that's eight and the ninth one that i want other than the platinum is the one that i'm going for in this particular playthrough vr mode has been done collectibles have been done ishliba capitalismos is done etc If you're playing on easy, you can definitely interrupt that attack. And I'm damaged again. No, I'm not. That's from the previous battle. Never mind. Nope, I'm damaged now. God damn it. Shot and failed to parry. And again. That machine gun. Yeah, I definitely intend to do this on Revengeance, but I don't think it's worth putting on YouTube simply because 
it's not going to be a very interesting playthrough. Basically, it's going to be a lot of uh, stop start, even after editing it. And a, a lot of this is going to be very cheesy, it's using the blue wig and infinite ripper mode, that sort of thing. And honestly, I don't think anyone wants to see that. Sorry. The soundtrack though. Chapter has been S-ranked. The other goal I've got with this playthrough is that I just want to grind some BP so that I can level up the armor breaker. Unfortunately, I invested my BP. I made some bad choices in life and I've invested it in the wrong places. So I have a bit of a shortage of BP in my life and we need to get some more so I can level up the armor breaker because that's going to be very useful for revenge mode. There's no like Easter egg here for doing well or anything like that. It's literally just gonna be two cutscenes, the in-game and the exterior, and then it moves on. It triggers at 50%. Self-taught and not half bad. Can't skip this one. This is to be very, very quick on revenge mode, that's all I can say. Being able to find a consistent way of getting him to strike as quickly here. Sometimes it's very quick, other times it's like, nah, I'm just gonna take my time taunting you. You're watching that arm bleed. God, the imagery in this game is fantastic. I'll talk more about the game shortly. There we go. Yeah, I've definitely done one playthrough of this on normal. Got S ranks for R-00, R-01, and then I got bored. Um, but I'm just going to play this normally and we'll see what we get. So my general thoughts on this game, I think it's good. It's possibly even great. I guess I've got two major problems with it. The first is the combat camera, and honestly... I mentioned that at the end of the game, but I'm going to mention it again here because it is... Oof. I mean, in open spaces like this, it's fine. No problem. Oh wait, so he's not dead. He is now. When you're in an open space like that, the camera's fine. 
Where the camera falls over is in small, tight, enclosed spaces. That was both in the game and also in the VR missions as well. Simply because if you're, say, in a corner over here... Titus, this is Boris. Give me your status. Looks clear. No one in sight. Good. As I also, also... So I still do not... Let's say there are enemies in the center of the room there, and you're trying to fight them off. You make your way into this corner, and you try to position the camera there. What happens in combat, and it's even happening right now, is that the camera refuses to look directly in the sensor there. And basically, I guess it's a function of the camera not being able to move through this wall. I've seen it work sometimes, like if I move behind this pillar. See, even that's not working properly. What should be happening is the wall and the pillar should become transparent. But it doesn't work like that. And what happens is often that the camera has a mind of its own, it rotates by itself, and that can absolutely ruin a good run. And it is actually the worst. I don't know if it's as bad as Bayonetta or not, but it's close. It's really close. But apart from that, the combat system is surprisingly solid, the whole Zandatsu thing, how Blade Mode works. It took me a very long time to understand how Blade Mode worked with respect to actually being able to cut limbs. Some civilians are still in the city. That is not good. And for a Platinum game that's not called Bayonetta, and for a not Platinum game that's not called Devil May Cry, I'm kind of surprised by how few, I'll say, combos or things there are actually to do in this game. You've got, I think, seven main weapons and three sub-weapons. The sub-weapons have almost nothing on them. And the main weapons, from what I can see, all handle very similarly. It's kind of surprising when you consider that DMC3, for example, has... Uh, how many weapons did that game have? About five weapons. And they all had very, very clear, defined movesets. By comparison, this game feels much smaller. I don't want to say much more intimate, but maybe that's the right description. I will say this game knows exactly what it wants to be with respect to the combat, and it executes it very well. It's just a shame about the camera. What happened there? Not sure what happened there. Down here. And this is what Ripper Mode's done to me. It's ruined me. Completely unable to play normal now. Daddy. Hey, that's terrible. Very good, Ryder. Now, keep heading for refinery. I'm also using the blue wick here, which means I have unlimited energy. You see it's full up top, and it doesn't matter how often I go into blade mode and do that, it's basically not going to see this pipe. Yeah, Revengeance Mode is basically just doing this, going into uh, Blade Mode when necessary, and also, where did he come from? Wow. Uh, and then restarting the checkpoints as needed to maintain your S rankings. And honestly, I don't think anyone wants to see that, so I'm not putting that online. The one other thing which I need to mention about the combat system, which that just reminded me of, there's something else that stems from Bayonetta, and I think Bayonetta actually does this better. And that is off-screen enemies. Bayonetta and some of the DMC games, I know 5 is programmed like that, I'm not sure about 4 or 3. The enemies are programmed to be much less aggressive if they are not on screen. I can see that it's sort of been implemented for this game. One moment, let me just take Blade Wolf down. Right. I mean, I'm just gonna fuck this dude up in blade mode. 
Rip and bite. Whatever it's called. Just send that to some people because we feel like it. Damn, that removed 33% just like that, using light attacks only. Right, I'm not fucking around with you. Although I wasn't expecting it to explode that quickly. No, not that run. Never mind. Wow. We don't actually need to execute him. I did not know that. So, it is sort of implemented because in VR Mission 19 in particular, you're fighting against four Fenrir, four of those dudes right at the end, and you're in a square room, and you can definitely... I guess manipulate the camera and manipulate their AI to so stop them from attacking you. Otherwise you'd have four on your ass all the time all at once and that's absolutely horrible. But in the main game, you saw it with the Gecko there and you saw it with the Mastiffs in Arch 04. It doesn't always work like that and it's frustrating. It just really is where you're getting hit by off-screen attacks where you've got no warning that they're coming in. I haven't played through very hard or Revengeance yet, so I don't know how bad it's actually going to get. Also, I totally died twice here yesterday. Just running across this bridge. I have no idea how. Apart from that though, the combat system is solid. I'll give it that. Alright, one moment. Yep, I've learned about my tools. That took it down to zero instantly. Wow, okay. Was not expecting that. Yeah, we don't care about hostages today, unfortunately. Still not 100% certain what the best way to take out sliders is. Also, yeah, that move has gotten me killed more than once in VR. Completely accidental. Let's see let me pass this invisible wall, Dr. Tool. Check the vehicle route again. You know, back at the entrance to the old city. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe you can hitch a ride. Most likely platoon commanders carry correct ID data for the gate. Use enhanced mode to figure out who to hit. Well, so I totally got run over by one of these APCs at the end of um, RJ-05. That is a thing that can happen. Alright, cutting arms. Basically, I need to cut just above the wrist there, like that. Took me a very long time to figure that out. Now, I believe on Revengeance mode, you don't actually want to do that. Instead, you want to cut the locks because that gives you a few additional enemies. More Zandatsu. And again, more time. Oh, 
Yeah, I thought that would um, take me over there, never mind. Yeah, I've forgotten how to play, never mind. Trying to answer blade mode, the game's not letting me. Now, I didn't do it, but apparently you can do this to um, get the no kill bonus as well. If you cut off their arms, maybe leave them with one leg, they will eventually despawn and that will lead you towards the no kills bonus. I personally just leveled up the wooden sword and made my kills with that thing, if you can call them kills. So I should mention this just for Revengeance Mode. Oh no, I can't get back through there. Shit. I've missed an optional battle. Oh, once I hacked off the arm, if you go back to the, um, the area where we fought the Hammerhead, and I use the term force very loosely because it basically died once we threw our side, uh, there's an additional battle there and that counts for ranking. So all this stuff is stuff to bear in mind for the Revengeance run. Likewise, there is also a battle here, which you can totally skip if you ninja everything. Which we're not going to do. Uh, can I get it? Yes. I think there's two more around here. Yes, so if you use... Never mind. Have I missed the battle? I think I've missed the battle, and I think I did that because I killed him too far away from the center area here. Normally there's some additional enemies that spawn. So it's a dying in one hit. The secondary weapons are fully leveled, which is probably why these dudes are dying in one hit. Alright, I've definitely missed two optional battles here. Now, Boris, we have some awesome music to listen to. Alright, we need our pole arm for this. I said we need our pole arm for this. This is basically very, very good. Wow. No, I wasn't trying to parry, I just. Mashing triangle and hoping for the best. This thing is very good at crowd controlling those little geckos. I tried. Alright, fine. Now there's some time. I 
I don't recall if this is a ranked. I really should just use my IR Marichima. I don't recall if this is a ranked battle or not. I don't think it is. to wreck people like this, it really is. That's off to a combat system, but it's got some issues. So I find it hilarious that we can't get out of here, we could actually climb up that little divot there. Let's go take out Mr. Oh. to the music there. It's dynamic music, but it had problems actually figuring out where it was. Absolutely. at us. Maybe not. You know what? I got no idea what she's doing. Okay, never mind. That phase is done. You know what? The way the lyrics kick in here is incredible. All of the bosses do it to some extent, but this one in particular. the camera jerked around there is not gross. I just want to bring it down to... no. I wanted to bring it down to 0.1. I have done that, but not this time. And I don't think I've got enough gecko kills to uh, get the S rank here. We don't got time to slash you into a million pieces today, Mr. Oh. We just don't. Yep, two missed. Let me put some points into the armor breaker just so I can show you where it's up to. So I've bought everything for the body category. 
a lot of these unlocked as I made my way through the VR missions. Same with the main weapons. So I've definitely invested some points in some bad places. I put some into the stun blade because I'm a fucking moron. The armor breaker is what I want to level up here. I haven't even looked at the longsword. This thing I leveled up purely to um, get the no kill trophy. That thing's fully leveled. And I haven't touched the machete. Yeah, this stuff is expensive, dude. I really don't need uptake rape and energy use, but I'm going to get it anyway, just because. So there are three wigs. One is sub weapons, one is infinite fuel, and one is dismember any mem. I nearly said mem memory. Dismember any enemy except bosses. I haven't actually played with that one. I'll have to look that one up later, but every I've seen is recommending using the blue wig, so yeah. Life is done, fuel cells is done, and skill is done. I have also leveled these up completely. There were five strength upgrades for each, and that was it, and that's probably how we're taking down those helicopters in one hit. But apart from that, the only thing I haven't done is basically pump points into the enchantments, enhancements, whatever however that's pronounced, for all of the weapons here. Some of these I've barely even started. Alright, let's move on to chapter 2. So the other thing that I'm sort of on the fence about on this game is the plot. It's right. I'm in the sewer system. Alright, let's get started. Your mission's a court F1. Tell we need of course. So uh, yep, find that no bro. Do we like it's pop first oh we're black maybe just I will Should also say that you will provide backup. I am wearing the red suit. Sir, yes, sir. Commence operation. And that gives me less defense at the expense of more damage, which is pretty much what I need for revengeance. Basically I don't need to get hit, so more damage, all good. Right. Unidentified UGs are patrolling the sewers. Exercise caution. The Mastiffs. If you do your wall attack and you, I know where you're coming from, then I'm good. If you do your drop kick, I'm also good. Yeah, even, even the start of that battle, where the camera lost itself, that is enough to grow my gears. Anyway, the plot. There was definitely context provided from Kevin in one of the codec conversations, and that is something I deeply appreciate. Because we were told during the last mission, hey, we've got your next mission lined up. And I'm like, oh, okay, let's clear a secret bait or something. Now this is the next chapter base, and that is not something I was expecting, because I was really expecting... I said this before, but I'll say it again. I was expecting more emphasis on Dolzaev and the oil refinery and this whole coup thing. I thought that was going to form the majority of the plot of this game. And it was just something that came and went very, very quickly. And I guess what I'm trying to say about the plot is that the plot moves at a... I'll say a breakneck pace, but it also really doesn't go anywhere. We do this mission, we find some brains, and Bryden has a sort of revelation. And one moment, I actually need to backtrack here because we're going to find our first humanoid gecko. I did find this on the main playthrough. Now, from what I've read, we need to make sure that they're both destroyed. Which is curious because I see four kills here. I don't know how that works. <laughs> I have no idea. Basically, Raiden has this revelation in the sewers. And then next minute, he's off to Denver. He breaks into a building. Goes to the top. And then from that point on, after we've reached the top of that building and defeated the Sundowner, there's eight more ranked combat encounters in the game across three chapters, and that's crazily short. Get over here. Don't even me. Thank you. Damn you. I 
offline with Wolf Kicker. I've definitely done better on that one, don't worry. Uh, where? Yeah, just add about 20 seconds to the combat time, just because... I mean, I know that Metal Gear games are not terribly long. I think you can speed run the first game in about three hours or so. As long as you're not playing on hard or extreme. So the kid got into yeah. God. There's it's not if I you should, that so I make sure you if a good But the ending of this game and this game in general just feels so abrupt. It's basically going at breakneck speed the entire time. And it doesn't give you any time to breathe. And I think that's a good thing. Some games do that and they thrive on it, and I suspect that is one of the reasons why people love this game so much. For me though, there's basically no quiet moments in this game, and I don't want to say it feels unbalanced or whatever, but it doesn't feel right for whatever reason. Don't get me wrong, I really like the themes of this game, I really like the plot overall, but at the same time I think it's moving a little bit too fast for my liking. Now I need to cut this guy normally. Yeah, if they do the drop kick or the wall attack, then you can usually get a perfect parry off pretty easily, as I discovered in VR Mission 18. We intercepted call for backup during your last fight. The caller's position is on your solitone radar. This you fight is a problem. It's going to be a it huge problem on revenge, so I'm not looking forward to it. You're under attack! Come at me. First one's not a problem. I guess you can just, um... Execute him. Mind you, I'm using a weapon mode here, so that's completely unnecessary. But then two more, well, one more immediately spawns, and then two more spawn. One here and one at the far end of the corridor. Although if you kill them fast enough, they all spawn at the same spot. And taking no damage on that fight is very, very hard. Now the thing is, that fight only happens if you did not successfully stealth kill all three Mastiffs. So this one's an optional. An optional and a missable. And getting no damage on it is really, really hard. Uh, where am I going? This way. Not this way. Rank battle there, so we don't need to come on. Pretty well hidden, I gotta say. It really wasn't Kevin, but whatever. Um, yeah, there's no rank battle there, so that's why I'm just charging through all this. Ah, this would appear to be you should answer. It must ask him, you should. All right. I will say though that I genuinely enjoyed listening to the Codex. Some of them were putting me to sleep, mostly uh, Boris and Politics, but I think it was worthwhile doing that. So we're supposed to do this room stealthily, but we can't because this is actually a ranked battle. And it's skippable if you do this room stealthily. Okay, there's two Raptors here. Just spawning now. It's probably very, very upset. Push up the side grip. This is no reason using it after I immediately quit it because it is not charged. Guidance. If they continue to increase. I believe this is a rank battle as well. Do better than that, Rodden. One slice, one kill. Jesus.
Right, so this one I'm a little confused on. Is it for now? Those were dark. George. Yeah, perhaps. Jeez. Wait, you said. Yeah, we've got an e I bet. We're definitely going to this room, and this is a ranked battle. I've seen that I can S rank it just by charging through the room and doing no damage to anyone. And it was critical to do this because one of them actually has an ID tag. But on my latest attempt, all I did is I ran through this room and I got an S rank. And I'm pretty sure that once Raiden comes back into the room, we need to take all these enemies out that we didn't take out with the Echo, but... I don't think that one is ranked. This should be an S. Like so. I still reckon I should have tried three times to put this in. That's how the joke goes. Okay, skip that. Where no one recognizes the shoe in for 2020. Right. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this one is not ranked. Boy. Last fight here is the last ranked fight is against a grad. And doing the snow damage earlier on was just a bit of a pain in the ass because what I did is I stood to the side, fired rockets at it to try and move it backwards without getting hit. Once it's moved backwards, it's fairly easy to rip this thing apart, but moving it backwards without getting hit is tricky. The bastard is blocking the way. Push that thing back. So the Psy doesn't work as well against this one, but the Psy absolutely wrecks all the other grades in the game. You see that thing attack. Basically it acts as a stun, and no joke, you can keep all the other ones stun locked. This one you can't. Getting the S ranks on Revengeance is basically just a case of getting through the battles without taking damage. As long as you don't completely screw up the rest of the battles, then all these Andatsus or the other requirements, then you'll easily get an S rank just by getting no damage. That will do us for chapter two. Ah, an artificial blood cry of Zema. What is that? It can you can so what I could only do it right.
got to get this maxed out. I just do. I don't know why, but I do. Yeah, Chapter 3 and Chapter 4 definitely feel like... I don't want to say the most well put together, but they feel like the most coherent chapters in the game. As far as the message that this game is trying to send, this is basically it. Yes. Just doing that to interrupt the dude behind me. Oh, those machine guns. That's how easy it is to lose health, which blows you no damage bonus. So this battle is quite unusual in that it's got a check there. It's got a checkpoints in the middle of it. That opens up. It says checkpoints. You know, I'm gonna kill a bunch more dudes. I found this out because a few of them do have left hands that you need to grab. And the checkpointing system basically counts the enemies that we've taken out already. Like we took out about five there, but it's going to say we've taken out more than five here. Twelve, there you go. Okay, the dual grad battle. I pretty much gave up on no damage bonuses at this point. But it is something that I'll need to figure out for vengeance mode. And never mind, that battle's done. Now there is another battle from whence we came. But it only triggers if we cause a ruckus here. Stealth killing is not good enough. Doctor says to extract them before they hit the floor. I'm not sure that entirely counts, Raiden, but whatever. You do you. Yeah, these custom cyborgs. Yes, I think they're customs. I need to kill 100 of them for a trophy, and that's basically just a gr oh god, that's bad. It's basically just a grind. Move your arm while I'm hacking up that dude. Unintentionally. I was distressed when these three showed up in my codex again. I thought they were gone. Go the rest of the Look, company, right. board, they'll be mm. weak. You sign, I can just talk. You won't, and you're I genuinely Rose. thought they were gone. You do, they, yeah. Well, no. I'll do, I don't specify. You go through that conversation, you go back into the codex, and they're back. Pretty sure this is not a rank battle. Should 
I think it's really using the pole arm for this. No, it is a rank battle. Right, definitely got a rank battle coming up ahead in the corridor, which it looks like one of the trickier ones, if you ask me. Uh, maybe not. I think I'm just overthinking the positioning of those right shields at the start. That sigh. Raphael would be proud. Now it is absolutely possible to fall off the crane here and off the roofs and that would count against you, so... So to take my time lining that up. Come on. Yeah, like the camera there, what is it doing? Even that, just running at the dude, sliding in, the camera decided to reverse its direction from whence I came. It's got some issues, it really does. So there's an optional encounter here. Basically, instead of going up there and having a chat to the hammer bro, we need to go this way and crack open this chest first. And I did actually find this on the playthrough. Yes. And there's Sue still above me. Those rockets just ruin my no damage. Okay. Thank you. That's interesting, I didn't see a checkpoint thing show up down the bottom, so that one doesn't actually save. Not until we're taking out the hammer bro. Yeah, I've had enough of you dudes in VR, I'm not screwing around with you here. I'm just not. I mentioned it earlier, but I'll mention it again. I really think this game could have benefited, as blasphemous as it sounds, from fixed camera angles in battle. I'm pretty certain that DMC does that. And honestly, it's better for it. Maybe not DMC 5, but the early ones for sure. The cameras are either fixed, or they are on a sliding rail. 
This is so much easier to control the battlefield and keep an eye on what's going on, figure out your directions, and so on and so forth. Now, there's another optional battle here. It's right here. If you ninja kill this guy, this rank battle doesn't happen. I'm not actually dead. Wow. I have no idea what just happened there. Also, this dude didn't get killed by the Psy. Interesting. Right there. So if you ninja kill that guy, you don't get this. That's kind of crazy design. This here is not a rank battle. And once again, we don't care about the hostage. I had my fuel rescuing those on the main playthrough. Never again. It's her own fault for getting captured. That's how easy it is to die. If I fell there, that would have been easy. You cannot proceed any further via the rooftops. There is a freight railroad underground. The elevator ahead will take you to it. Is that the World Marshal building ahead of us? Imagine it'll be that thing, if anything, just thinking taller is better, because that's how these things work, but... I'm just curious. I'm pretty sure we could traverse via the rooftops if we really tried hard enough. Just saying. This must be the railroad. It was this city, this, it was originally... Yeah. As a... Please tell me you move back to position. If not, I need to get in combat, so I don't have a choice. Because as far as I know, there's no way over to the left here. Alright, we're getting into combat. the camera behaved there. As soon as I landed the final blow, it jerked 90 degrees to the right. It's so weird. Now, I'm not sure how to get past... I mean, this guy, you just ninja kill, no problem. But I'm not sure how to get past the geckos here without getting spotted. I actually have no idea if that's possible. I'll probably find out when I'm looking for guides on revengeance. Because again, I don't see a way through on the left, and the moment you climb up there, you're going to get spotted by these geckos. Like so. I'll get out of here. I haven't looked up titles to see if there's things like no alert runs or whatever, but I imagine they exist. 
is a maintenance shaft up ahead. Use it to return to the surface. Let's get rid of you. Now this here is a rank battle. You can see where he went. That's another battle that's asking for the pole arm or a speedy kill on the master block this. Once these dudes go down. We can go up here to get out. But first we need to go this way because what should have happened is after taking the last two hours, there should be a gecko right in front of us. And I don't see it there and I'm mildly concerned about it. About now. Or I might actually have to walk this way to see it. It might spawn in over here. Ah, uh, game. I was expecting to get salty at the end of this playthrough, not... Fine, I'll activate the terminal, but I expect them to spawn once I have. I'm extremely concerned. Why are they not here? I'm just going to go this way for a bit. Maybe I need to take our little dwarf geckos. Maybe that's where I've gone wrong. And if that's the case, then this playthrough is a bust. That's probably it. I probably need to take out all the dwarf geckos, and I left a couple alive as I made my way through this corridor. Ah, that'd better not be it. Because I don't remember what Treffy Guide says. I don't have it up on my screen, but um, that is definitely not mentioned anywhere. See if they spawn, but if not, so I'm going to start from the beginning again. And don't worry, I'll cut that part over YouTube because no one wants to see that. There we go. Not sure what went wrong. All right, let's kill him and see how many kills we get. Yeah, I recall getting three last time I came through here. Even though, you know, there are two geckos stacked on top of each other. But I fully understand that, and I hope that I haven't missed something. Really do. Where are we going? This way. Raiden, it would appear your only way forward is to return to the surface. You will secure the bar. Proceed. Those do not sure. ride. Remind I am. Right. You have almost reached World Marshal Headquarters. Tripped on his own grenade. Ah, that Brad. So I'm gonna take this dude out underneath the bridge, or I need to bring this thing down first, and then take down the Brad. Yeah. 
Come on. So later on, this is where we're going to find that last hostage. Pretty sure this one is not ranked. and 100 custom cyborgs. I'm also kind of worried about this battle simply because of all the RPG soldiers here. In Revengeance, this one may be an issue. Though that dude right here to the spot. They're also surprisingly vulnerable to the pincer blades, just quietly. If you hit them once or twice, that's normally enough to put them into an execution state. As long as you've stunned them a little bit first. Yes, and this one ranked? Yes, it is. Good. Horse walk. Coming through here with the wooden sword is quite humorous. Or at least I think it's quite humorous, but then again, my sense of humor is pretty fucked up. Now, there's two more rank battles here. There's one right here. Oh, come on. Totally should have been Ness rank, but it's not. I had a longer combo, that would be it. And there's one more rank battle after this, other than the boss, I mean. And curiously enough, it's right here. And I'm not sure how to do this one. If you kill all these dudes, you actually get ranking for it. Therefore, we need to kill all these dudes. I don't know if I can ninja kill them or whether it's just that. Can't go into blade mode, so that's not an option. I have no idea what they're going to be like on Revengeance. Yeah, there's five dudes here that I need to take out stealthily somehow. And I haven't succeeded yet. I'm also not sure how the um, outside of Lord Marshall, the start of the boss battle, plays out on Revengeance. 
because you can absolutely take out um, many, many people there, but you're going to get hit in the process. Yep, just like that. Enemy sighted. Which means we're screwed. There goes our no damage bonus. And there's one more directly ahead. It's probably not the tallest building here. He's also got a machine gun, so yeah. Getting these dudes down is going to be a problem, I think. Though maybe on Revenge, so I can get a slightly higher combo. I did read somewhere that longest combo 4 is good. So this here is not ranked, but I'm worried about it nonetheless. I don't know if this ruins no damage against Monsoon, for example. So yeah, regardless of how many hits I can take here, I won't die. It's all scripted. attack but they're not going to attack either. Monsoon. I am also very worried about Monsoon. Is your cause just? Or is that just what you tell yourself? Fuck you. Alright, let's see how many phases I can burst past. Yes, you are the only one that grows. War is and I've more or less realized that if he throws a smoke grenade at the start, that is basically a restart because we're going to take damage. That is not a smoke grenade. Oops. Not see that kick. Sixty-three percent, just like that. All right, so this thing, we can avoid this. Stand on this corner. I won't avoid this one because this one's easy. If I die, so that I should probably just quit my streaming career and start something new. Same here. At this point, I'm pretty much at his mercy. I just need to wait for him to do an attack. Being impatient. No, not that. I don't think there's anything I can do about that. I can't punish it. I can't counterattack. I'm just gonna let it go. Oh, hello. Didn't think that actually worked, but okay. Yeah, while well, he's circling around here, he can attack very quickly, which is why I'm basically trying to, trying to put all the inputs in there for the parry. So, 40%. He starts throwing more shit again. I will cut through this. For the next one, I'm going to run and avoid. Like so. Basically just involves running around the edge here. 
and then up like that. And then returning to the corner as soon as possible to prepare for the next wave. The next wave is indeed coming. Spike grenade. It's actually possible to get a um, let's get a hit off while we're doing while he's doing that, but it's tricky. There you go. Forty percent. So this thing apparently can parry this. I've only tried it very briefly. I'm going to try it now. it and then destroy it. So if you carry that, he sends his... Never mind. He sends his legs after you, you can parry that. Then run at him directly, he's gonna do a couple of parries. At that point, he can do this. Get close enough. Never mind. Chindy lost. And now I'm getting fucked up. Okay, so I think if I just keep attacking and legitimately hit it. Oh, come on, I parried that. Queen percent. Yeah, I'm very worried about this boss. There we go. Oh, come on, game. He's just moving out of range. I'll see that one coming. Alright. Run to the corner. It's going to throw a ton of shit at us, which actually is kind of difficult to cut, so I'm not going to cut it. And back to the corner. See, this is an example of the camera working well. Even though I'm in the corner, it is keeping the focus on the enemy where it needs to be. Okay, just gotta parry him now. Done. Oh, come the fuck on, game. Yeah, his sigh works very well. Basically stuns him, and there I can do some hits here. I think it's also a wide loop gun. It's cheating, but I don't care. It's goddamn music. I don't always like butt rock, but when I do, it's usually in my video games. No, seriously, this is actually legitimately good music. The entire soundtrack's great. I think it's a large part of what people love about this game. I really do. So I definitely have died here. Missing the execution prompt. One slice, one kill. Our fuel cells are empty, really? I haven't.
have a week to take care of that stuff, game. Alright, did I miss any battles? No, good. That almost says Bassassa. I kind of read that as badass for a moment. D ranks do exist. I did get one of those when I was offline, so maybe I can get it to spell badass sometime. Let's invest our BP. Oh, so close. We'll get it next time, and then maybe we can level something else up as well. I imagine everything is going to be done well before I'm completed for Vengeance Mode. Second one. Clearly. Ooh. Damn, terrible stuff. Two doggers. So this encounter is one of the few where we don't actually need to get no damage. To gun down the people in the lobby who we can't reach, and then attack the fools who actually go through the barriers and beat us. have an appropriately large combo. If I don't, I have problems. And there's also going to be some Mastiffs coming as well. Start is good enough. Well, that frame rate. Again, the trick here is if you go into the elevator immediately, then what will happen is the combat and castle will end. I forgot about the red. Wow. Uh, and you won't get any bonus for it, so you have to stay out here until everyone is dead. Oh, that Mastiff. Couldn't see him. 
that's totally fine. Apparently. Alright, let's get rid of this grad. I think the trick with the grad is when it hits the very top parts based on one of the later VR missions where you actually got to take down a whole bunch of dudes with the turret. I found I have the most joy against the grad by hitting the thing at the top. But I do need to get a combo going, so let's just aim a little bit lower for a bit. Are we done? Yep, look at that, that's an S. Now, regarding the electrical panels, I do not know how the, the combat scenarios are, are arranged like here. I'm going to assume, however, that I need to raise some hell. So I'll start by taking you out. Regardless of how well you do here, you will eventually go into combat at some point. There's also a hammer bro that spawns with a left hand, but you need to get if you do it silently. Hacking off all four limbs would be enough, but no, he needs to reach out into his chest and pull out his worm at the same time. Interesting. And a hammer bro spawns. Try to execute multiple times and fail. And that should be no damage. Again, I'm not sure how the next combat encounter works, but I've got an S rank just by Zandatsuing the nukes and sprinting through the rest. I'm pretty sure I did take damage during it. Just trying to see why this guy didn't die. I'm oh, taking damage, it's fine. Let's see if we can get through this. I think the primary thing here is it's fine. I'm taking damage, holy crap. I'm not even sure how. Just in case you know, I don't think it's actually at 100% or 200%. I want one additional one just to make myself feel better about the situation. How about that? Does that work? No? Ignore me, chat. That's going to be a grad ahead. Now. And 
is now very dead bread. Why didn't we just do this to begin with? We just scoured the exterior of the building like this rather than going inside, trying to hack elevators, talking to reception, having to get an access card, that sort of thing. Just run up the side of the building. And there's our S. Right away, it's up now, yeah? Almost there. I have just finished analyzing the latest security date. You should. A jet. A oh, there's a. Not a. I thought I have. Great. Element now. So, this here is definitely an encounter. But I think after that, the next one, we've got all, all the mastiffs and stuff hanging around. I'm pretty sure it's not an encounter. But I don't remember, so I'm not going to take any risks. I'll start a ruckus and kill everyone who tries to kill me. Oh, this camera, honestly. This guy's a lefty. I missed him multiple times. Game. Yeah, I think if he's not dead already, he's going to be dead from blood loss very shortly. So there's a dude directly behind here, and I did find another way of getting in, but I'm struggling to remember where it was. Might have been that way. Yeah, it was this way. You can totally sneak around this dude directly here. I'm pretty certain this isn't a battle. Transporting materials. You can take that to the elevator. Wouldn't let me angle it down. Damn it. Right, no idea where the master is. Yeah, so that me parrying there was basically just instinct, based on the fact that I saw him jumping over to the left. I had no idea when he was coming in. Basically, I just guessed and hoped for the best. And even then, I don't think I actually parried him. I think I parried the other soldier. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this one is not ranked. Yeah, it's not. All right, follow the catwalk straight ahead to reach the elevator. My apologies, Raiden. I seem to have fallen behind. No worries. Actually, I should thank you. What are you if it were that more or less. I from the use you cannot save every after how <laughs> well right. I do want to say that listening to the codex, it was very jarring to hear Raiden on some of them and Jack on others. I don't think that was put together as well as it possibly could have been. Just of all the timing of the codex and when the voice lines were recorded, if that makes any sense at all. I'm uh, pretty sure this one is ranked. Which one 
So I guess I should try and get a sand that soon. No, okay. So there's two ranked fights on this elevator. The second one is hidden. Some cyborg. I need to rip you apart or just hit me more in general, but I'd rather try to do that and then tear you apart like so. We've also got geckos and raptors coming. Oh, that's a terrible miss. Trying to hit the other one. Got it. Right, where's the raptor? Pretty sure there's a raptor that comes in anyway. So at this point, the fuel tank is going to get shot by rocket soldiers, possibly. Look up, Raiden. Another freight platform. Yep, there we go. No, not yet. Okay, so there's three encounters on this platform there. Doggos. Not raptors, doggos. Nope, there's the raptors. I knew there was a raptor somewhere. Hopefully there isn't a second, because if there is, it's going to be very pissed off at me. There we go. Alright, so this is the third hidden encounter. Basically we need to kill everyone on this platform, and not jump off until everyone is dead. sure the gecko is spawning definitely but at some points the enemy stops spawning and then once that's done you can then get off and you'll get your bonus okay please stop eye framing we'll know the moment he stops eye framing your eye frames will not last forever So I'm not getting off just yet. We're waiting for all of these guys to stop spawning. Hopefully I can iframe through that grenade. Anyone else? Okay, we're good. But yeah, that is a combat encounter in and, of, in and of itself. And that's what that just was. If you leave there immediately, you don't get that. In the form of a hammer bro and three sliders. Sliders are a problem. And then the best part is, once they're down, we get mastiffs as well. Because fuck you, that's why. Can I see the sliders? Can I see the masters coming in? Of course not. Oh, this game is designed, seriously. Like I said, I like this game, but it's got some problems. It really does. I'm 
And that's going to be a tricky S rank, I think. The server room's ahead? Yes, according to what I have here. What should I if they're right? They would, but no doubt it makes a con yeah, and and even so, so if he well, if, well. This one also worries me a bit. The guides I've read say to just do this battle quickly and you'll be fine, but I'm worried about it. In the same way that I'm worried about the monsoon fight in general. What? Miss Charles? No. I'd be if I had to get lightning controlled by an AI. Yeah, I really need my pole arm for this. This is not a suitable weapon. And I've completely lost track of her. Okay, she did. Oh, and she can't get up. I don't know why I'm picking these up because I'm at full health. That gives me literally no BP. And the spare monks too? Well, if it's AI control, it should pose no problem for you, yes? Oh, fuck. No, not that. Yeah, I'm definitely not getting any kind of attack off there. There is a way you can parry through that, but it's very hard. There we go. I don't know what determines that. Not see that, but I can parry you in the air, that's fine. Get out of here. Oh, come on. There we go. Yeah, I think if you kill enough geckos and you complete the fight quickly enough. You can get out of that without needing a no damage. But it's tricky, and I'm very worried about it. Don't disrupt the students while class is in session. I believe you're familiar with the lesson plan. The same regimen you went through in Liberia. Effective program. Just look how you turned out. Of course, running it in the real world just got a bit too complicated. Doing it virtually, though. No fuss, no muss. Straight to the brain. It's like a dream. Well, maybe dream is the wrong word. They do kill some POWs, some civilians. <laughs> they enjoy it, though. We give their pleasure centers a nice big jolt every time. <laughs> Plus, they get a shiny new body as a graduation present. I suppose you can give us those shiny bodies. Assuming they're child bodies, not adult bodies. Get Do not lose it this time. So, hidden battle. Instead of going after Sundowner, you retreat. And you get this. Rise is here. Because fuck you, that's why it's here. Two Raptors, two Sliders. And a couple of Dwarf Geckos, just for funsies. Oh! Okay, I need to be a bit more intelligent about that. I got the no damage and that was only an A. Ok, 
Okay, before we kill Sundowner, I need to take out the Dwarf Gecko lookalike. Humanoid lookalike, whatever. And I've read the guide and it says to fire missiles at them. But it does say to be very careful that you've actually blown up both. It says three kills, which is identical to what we got in the last chapter, so I'm hoping against hope that we are good. If we're not, I'm going to be very upset. Also, I've only got uh, one homing missile now. Hopefully that's enough to take out the hammerhead. Alright, I looked it up. I'll show you the rest of the mechanics, but honestly, on Revengeance, I don't want to do this. Oh, come on, I carried that. Also parried that. Keep your blade away from the shield. Where is he? Okay, so strike once and then wait, and then strike the exposed panels. I wasn't waiting because I button mash. And if you immediately strike back once it gets a parry, you're getting fucked up. Sure, I can't. Now, the problem with this is he gets a whole new moveset. Honestly, if you're playing on Revengeance, I think it is actually easier to keep him in the original phase. What we're seeing here is pretty easy. And this might actually be over before he does his other moves. Yeah, it is over. Never mind. He can spawn adds, he can play with the poles, he can do a whole bunch of weird stuff. And I don't know if that's necessary to get the rank on Revengeance. If it is, then I've got problems. But I'm hoping I can just manipulate his shield use dodges to get around him and kill him similar to how I killed him on my normal playthrough. Another thing I haven't realised, or I didn't realise until I watched other people's posts about this game, is that this thing comes equipped with rockets. Like the shoot them at things and they'll make things explode for rises, so... I think what I can do is just camp the bottom left corner, mash the square button, and if there's any debris in front of me, it'll just get blown up. Again, no time to screw around. It's so from this point on, I feel the game ends very abruptly. I mean, you can say on one hand, yeah, we've achieved our goal. We have revenged Namani, revenged him with a vengeance. But to me, it ends way too quickly. There's only eight more ranked encounters after this, which is kind of crazy. Mark seven. Right. Yeah, it says contact Solus, but it doesn't mention Sonny's name until the codex later on. Yeah, not quite an S rank there. Looking okay though. Actually, that, that last one was a B. That's that's trash. That's rubbish. I'm a terrible player.
Okay, the armor breaker is done. Apparently that is essential for Vengeance Mode, even though I haven't touched it yet. It can be used to break things, even when we're not in Ripper Mode, perhaps. Let me finish off the Wooden Sword. Putting him at an even greater disadvantage. I will say that till last. Though again, I'm out of money. I'm out of BP. I made some poor investments, chat. So I still need to level up the stun blade, the Urodachi, wooden sword, and the machete. Dead and he's not getting back up. What about you? This is the second one. No, I didn't. Never mind. One of eight. Dutch Vandalin, how you doing, dude? Thank you for hanging out. Raiden, are you all right? I can't. You just and get up. Uh, yeah, guess a lot. But if you are fine. Right, so I think I can avoid all the geckos here just by running. Take out the hammer, bro. Casually get damaged by machine gunners on the sides. Come on. Okay, now that he's down, the others should be coming in. is the exact opposite of what I should do here. I need to do this. Time to accelerate and decelerate from first cosmic velocity. It could require more than 30 minutes to get to Pakistan. How these things don't see me, we will never know. So the next gecko is ahead in the Fountain Plaza or whatever plaza it is just at the bottom of these stairs, but it only spawns if you are in stealth mode. Down there, right in the middle. And I'm very worried about this slider here because it did spot me on one of the previous playthroughs. Oh man, that building is fucked up. Damn. So I need to take this out and then take out the one in the last chapter. And hopefully the trophy will pop. I think it's down. Damn, it wasn't actually dead. Sam Batsu showed up at the end there. And that one's not actually dead either.
Now I believe we need to clean up the geckos now, otherwise we're not getting out of this encounter. We took Every damage, right? The route with relatively light security. I will mark the heading on your solitone radar. Right, we do not care about the hostage today, sadly. All we care about is taking out this massive. Right. And I have been run over by this APC before. That is a thing that can happen. I can't Zandatsu you, I'm just going to hack you to pieces instead. Yeah, that APC has definitely run me over. Not even joking. a dirty war hacker. So there was a secret VR thing in here, but this spawns a battle. Maybe I have to open this. Not sure. Try exiting and maybe. This is one of the few times I would actually like the Mastiffs to come out. There we go. All three of them, which is absolutely awful, but I need to do this because it is a ranked battle. Boy. Raiden, please. See, not good, not good at all. But yeah, we're taking as long as I need to on revenge mode to get this done right. <sighs> that ain't good. All right, let's redeem ourselves against Uncle Sam. You know what, I've got barely any BP, let's save it. You need to do that yet? I don't know why I did that. 60% already. Damn. Can do. That didn't stun you, really? Normally the Sire acts as a stun. Interesting. Not sure why it's not working there. That's normally how I play this. Okay, slide doesn't work. Unless I'm just getting confused in this. Yeah, just do that. Yeah, okay, okay. It's just normal and then either parry or strike. which is unfortunate. That happens. So I believe I read somewhere that I need to build my combo here. 
but I'm concerned that his blade is coming in like that. And the moment you strike there, it's over. Yeah, no damage is going to be essential for a vengeance. That's probably a big old bee. Maybe enough crappy C? No. Alright, fine. Alright, let's see if this damn trophy pops. And then we'll just finish the chapter and call it quits for tonight. So the last gecko is right here. Says three kills, hopefully that's good enough. I'm not sure if it pops now or at the end of the chapter. There we go. That's all I wanted. I mean, it would be nice if I could get um, the other cyborg trophies, but I don't think that's going to happen tonight. The RPG dude hit me. No. Yeah, enjoy those S ranks while you can. I'm definitely not going to get them against Excelsis and Armstrong. That's not happening. I'm not that good yet. I'm heading. Sam's gone. Alright, so if I wanted to speed run this, I'd go over to the left and just follow the left. But this is not a ranked encounter, and I do not need to speed run it. Also, need to take these dudes down. You're not getting back up on that. Ooh, nice. frame rate. I get why it's doing it and to its credit the game holds up pretty well most of the time. I mean, this is a PS3 game after all and Bayonetta came out at 30 FPS. Sometimes it was often lower but yeah. Sometimes the frame rate goes wonky and I'm not sure why. First combat encounter you have in the game, R-00. I've definitely seen the frame rate drop into like say four or five times while the enemy is being dismembered. And then the moment they hit the ground, it still goes slowly, and then a couple of seconds later it's like, yep, okay, enemies despawn, we can despawn the parts, bam, frame rates back up to normal. Super curious. To be clear, that's not a knock on the game, I swear. Oh, that gun camera. Get out of here. Alright, 
Excelsis. the part where I should unequip the Psy so that I can actually throw in some heavy attacks at some point. Now depending on how much damage I've done, I may get the Sandatsu here very quickly. Like that. I just kind of burst through here. As I said, I missed this on the easy mode playthrough. Only 47, okay. I think I've got it down much further on easy, like about 40 something. Like 41, 42. Alright, so this part is annoying. This is actually easier on the harder skill level because lasers fire faster and these dudes pretty much block everything you throw at them so you can get yourself into a state where one of those dudes is actually alive or he's not firing his laser and if that happens you're actually in trouble believe it or not oh nobody saw that or that I was me trying to get in between them but whatever yeah so if these don't get taken out now I'm in trouble should be okay. Second foot should come in, and this is going to end very, very quickly. No, not yet. Damn, okay. I was not expecting that. over very quickly. The one part that I'm not sure about this battle is where to build up the combo. Whether it's here maybe or somewhere else. Bearing in mind that building up combo takes time, which I don't have. So I definitely did die here by missing a QCE. Specifically, it was the execution cues here coming up right about now. If you miss that one, you will die. Not sure how many times I need to strike this in. I see the word destroyed though, and that's good enough for me. Yep, 
Yeah, longest combo 25. That's nowhere near good enough. I'm strong. No damage here involves no damage against all three phases. Oh, come on. I know he can grab you in the air, and I did try to dodge, but I still got to get my timing right on that. Am I going to die? I might actually die here. Oh, no, I've got nano pace. I'll be fine. Yeah, he definitely does try to jump. Emphasis on try. So second phase, you just need to dodge his attacks. Run around like a headless chicken, basically. And I haven't succeeded at this yet. We can't parry because we are defenseless. We don't have a sword. Basically, you keep this up for about two minutes, and that's how you can avoid damage. Even here, the camera is misbehaving. Again, small space, small enclosed room. I know this isn't a room and it's not an enclosed space, but you know what I mean. In terms of playable area, it's a closed room. And yes, you could say, well, in all games, every playable area is a closed room. Shut up, I know what I, know what I mean. You know what I mean. Whatever, I can't talk anymore. Yeah, running and jumping away from that is a good idea. I was only trying running on the main playthrough, but jumping is also a good idea. Love the weight of that swing. I'm going to go Kano on your heart very shortly, dude. So, yeah, that is a fail. He does do like a scripted attack at the end there once time is up, but I should be able to dodge that. A similar thing happened on my easy playthrough, which took me down from 200 to 150, and I'm pretty sure I didn't get damage during phases 1 and 3, and that wasn't good enough for no damage. Exactly 5%. So can I just express how crazy it is that during that phase, if you use um, square, you get punch, and if you use triangle, you get kick. It's crazy that there is a move set existing for bare hand, but it only exists inside this battle. That's kind of insane. There's basically a weapon that only exists inside the battle, nowhere else. Oh god. Okay, we're off to a terrible start. But we're not playing on hard today, so we'll be fine. Plus, we're starting with five nano pastes. Yeah, on easy mode, I basically bursted directly to his healing phase and then managed to avoid all this until the very end. Alright, can we not screw this up tonight? I 
me practicing chat. Sorry. It has to be. Sorry. Instant reaction. Damn it. Okay, so at this point, you can just blade mode him down in easy to about 10% or so. some point he's going to yeet out of here. Five percent. Close. Sorry. How are those nano machines working for you now, son? Someone call Ed Boon. I'm sure he knows. I mean, I think that's decent redemption for what happened on the main playthrough, but I was also playing on hard with no nano paste and no upgraded weapons, so it's very, very different. SBA. Meh. Yeah. Could be worse, I guess. Now, unfortunately, I cannot skip the credits. I don't really have much to say for the credits, so I may just skip over this. But yeah, cool game. Cool game. Okay, so just to put this play through its bed, there are nine trophies still to go, including the Platinum. So, Platinum Trophy, the Revengeance Run, which I won't be putting on YouTube because, honestly, I don't think anyone wants to see that. There are five trophies for taking out the bosses without getting hit on hard mode or above, but I'll get those on the Revengeance run. And there are two trophies for taking out 100 Custom Cyborgs and 100 Hammer Bros, and I'm going to need to grind for those because I've played through the game a couple of times now, as you'll see in a moment, and I still don't have those. That's it, everything else is actually done. The VR missions, they're not terribly difficult but they're hard enough to be absolutely annoying shout outs to missions 7 for being annoying 18 for taking me about an hour that third wave is no joke and i also have problems with the mission after that 19 going to zandatsu the two hammer bros cyborgs and then four fenrirs at the end honestly the biggest challenge i had with that one was trying to keep everyone alive so i can kill them via zandatsu without them accidentally killing each other 
there's a bit of juggling that you have to do. There's a lot of juggling you have to do in a lot of missions, and honestly, they kind of expose the flaws of this game, if you ask me, in the combat system and in the platforming and stuff like that. But it's okay. It's just extra stuff that you can do. So, yeah. yeah it's all good. Final thoughts on this game? Look, I do like this game. I really do. It's got a few issues, I think. The music certainly is not one of those issues. But I do genuinely like this game. And I did genuinely enjoy my time with it. And I'm not quite done with it because I need, still need to do Revengeance. I don't know if my opinion will change after I've done Revengeance. Hopefully not. But yeah, I can say that I really, really, really enjoyed this game. Surprise you can't skip the credits after you've completed it once. And that's not a nitpick, I swear. I'm just surprised by it. Also, I still think it's hilarious how there are seven credits just for that one magazine. Even skip this part. Her doctor's research and staffing service certainly help. I hear World Marshal's looking for a buyer. <laughs> well, you cost them a lot of money, no? Not to mention killing their funding. Literally. <laughs> uh, the bread taking program is finished, but the larger company is not, I'm afraid. Uh, someone will buy them. PMCs are in demand once again. Fighting for reasons they don't understand. Causes they don't believe in. Big pardon? No. Nothing. Oh. That's about the only thing that Raiden so learns, I think. Your mind is made? You will not come back. Sorry, Boris. I understand. But then, what will you do? then Raiden was never heard of again, as of 2023. Yeah, just over two hours playtime. It's a very short game. It really is. Though it continues. Five titles again. I don't know how we get... Ah. Complete normal difficulty without dying in less than four hours. In less than eight hours. I already had that one. Got that one. Got that one. Yep. I don't know how to get the rest of the titles, and honestly, I'm not terribly interested in finding them. But you can see here, yes, I've been busy. I played through um, easy mode earlier, what was it? yesterday, I think, and played through normal today, just to grind out a bit. And also, the trophy guide mentioned that I needed to play the first chapter on very hard to unlock something. I think that was the suits. So that's all done, and purchasing all that stuff gave me Ishliba... Is the Lismos, or however you pronounce that. And yeah, that is where I'm going to call and end this series. So that was Metal Gear Rising Revengeance for the PS3. Very, very old game, but I think it's a very, very good game. And I don't know if it's a great game, but I definitely enjoyed my time with it. That's where I'm going to call it. My name is Random Attribute. Thank you for watching, everyone. And I'll be back online with something new very soon. See you then. Yeah, that thing there. That thing can go to hell. Some of these are no joke, for reals.